Yes. Now, as we continue our discussion on the program this morning, we've been joined by a public affairs analyst and a regular on the show, Dr. Aliu Elias. Hello and good morning, Doctor. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Well, it's a pleasure to have you join us on the program. Thank you. This morning we saw in the news um, General Theophilus Nanjuma, who was um, one time Chief of Army Staff and also Defence Minister in the uh, country, making a call to the Chief of Defence Staff, General Christopher Musa, to ensure that he ends insecurity in the country at a time when many people are sort of feeling like perhaps there is no more hope for Nigeria, for Nigeria's peace and security to be restored. Let me get your, your reaction to this statement coming in from uh, such an elder statesman. Right, I think it's quite instructive to have come out from such a, a statesman who have the experience, you know, he has doubled as the Chief of Defence Staff and also uh, my Minister of Defence. So I think coming from him shows, shows that they are also concerned about the insecurity. But going forward, I think we just need to be more strategic because if you look at about a month now, I think I can score them high because, you know, the, is it Subulu or Sububu? Yeah. The guy they just caught. I think that is how Nigerians should work. And you could see that there is a synergy between them and the SSS and police. You know, when that synergy comes, we really see the result. So I think it's quite instructive. And that shows that it is quite a concern for all Nigerians that we are having such level of insecurity because we don't know what happened next. In fact, we're in a country that you don't know what happened next. You don't know where is the next place they will be attacking, you know. And it has no class again. You know, it is not, it's as if the... Uh, kidnapping or banditry is becoming more profitable for them and they are no nobody's arresting them there is no challenge on them because i also listened to governor Daud Alawal yes. of uh, safari i was so hopeful that truji will be gotten as well you know if you can really target this uh, if you notice they have moved from northeast now down to northwest North and East. i think if we can really attack them uh, very because you know you don't allow these people to just uh, keep flowing as if it's just uh, a free uh, thing for them to do. So if we are on, the, on our game as well, from the military uh, part, I think they will not have rest. Well, 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 certainly. Now let me also get you react to a report by Amnesty International that in about uh, 667 out of the 774 local government areas in Nigeria. Uh, 13,346 people have been killed due to insecurity. 9,207 others have been ad abducted. Now, this is quite a, a very large figure to attribute to just insecurity in, in a country that has such superior military power like Nigeria. Well, my first question is that if Nigerians that had the problem, do we have statistics of what they're actually releasing? That's another thing. So I think I want to believe them because they have, they will see the carry out that there is. And it's quite appalling and challenging to see that enormous number suffering this type of casualties and human, you know, human problem, not even natural uh, disaster. So I think there is a very urgent need for us to just be proactive, not reactive, because that's the problem we have. Yes. Just after we see an incident that we start, but we are made to know that Nigerian police. SSS have a lot of gadgets that they can use to trace all these people. So why don't we deploy? In fact, the almighty Tucano jet is being packed now. And not, and not in use. And not in use at all. So we wonder, and where they want to put it, it's as if it's the last resort that will solve the problem. So we need to go with maybe true non kinetic at this point in time. You know, our SSS need to work more. State security, you know, you go silently before they even actualize anything. You've gotten the information, you know, you be there because we must be smarter than these people. And because, and we have all the instruments. Yes. Imagine the S S N N S N S D C, the police, the D S S. You know, a lot of N I A, a lot of them are there. So I think we need to because this world number is open. It's just too much a number to to reckon with. Now, now, now Doctor Aliu, for someone like uh, the retired General Theophilus Anjuma, who was instrumental in ensuring the unity of Nigeria, especially during uh, the 1967 to 1970 uh, civil war, he's still alive. He's still here and hearty. Yet he's seen this sort of insecurity that is, you know, causing Nigeria to be at the brink of complete and utter anarchy. How do you think, I know you're not him, but perhaps, how do you think he will be feeling seeing a country that he fought uh, very, very tirelessly for in this situation? 
Right. I, I think if you ask me, I think they have also missed some processes because, you know, it's about processes. So if let's assume that uh, when uh, President um, Tafa Balewa became president and our democracy was not truncated up to now, you know, you know, democracy, you keep learning, you keep improving on what you have. I think by now we'd have sought a lot of problems. We wouldn't have been at this level because even almighty America, you could see what is happening to them through Trump. Because a lot of things, so it's an ongoing sum. So I think if we don't have that truncation, which perhaps is one of the people that benefit from those truncations, that should have been a another thing. But that for his wealth of experience, you know, for he understand the capacity of Nigerian soldiers, he still amazes as well. That how can these people come? And you could see that they are coming different. If you don't see IPOP, you see Boko Haram. You see banditry, you see unknown gunmen, unknown gunmen you different, see different uh, names and I hats. swap uh, different different names. So I think we need to be just be you know much more how do I call it much more intentional to deal with these people so that they can actually stop these things. And I like the approach of Nigerian soldiers now. See them get to see them and kill them because you don't give such people uh, opportunity because that's where we got it wrong from. Whenever you get them, they say they want to give a, a, a book or an amnesty. You know, it's quite surprising. Or rehabilitate, or rehabilitate, them. rehabilitate them. And by the time you rehabilitate them, they still go back to be an informant. Because what we are suffering more is much case of informant. Do, during, during the last administration, so something happened that really shocked uh, not just Nigerians, but the world entirely, where Boko Haram members uh, were termed repentant and were pardoned. And, you know, reintegrated back into uh, their Society. societies. But we saw the outcome of that. A lot right. of them uh, revolted again, killed their immediate family members, and were on a killing spree in this community. That's the problem we are having because you know, you know, you have to look at the psyche of these people. If it's, um, in terms of their their psyche, they believe that that's the best life they can live. You could even see some, even uh, people they kidnapped that they marry, when they come to the society, they will just still find their way of going back to these people. So it's about psyche. So for me, if you caught a Boko Haram person please eliminate that person because that spirit is still in that person perhaps they would have jeopardized a lot of people's lives so why are you giving them such amnesty opportunity perhaps if they are aware that you give them amnesty they always come back you know take advantage of the amnesty and still go back to i, I mean the, the the only one particular instance where amnesty was granted to militants uh, in Nigeria, and it sort of worked was uh, the situation with the Niger Delta militants where they were offered amnesty, jobs were given to them, they were meaningfully uh, engaged by the federal government, and somehow the issue of militancy in the Niger Delta region has been suppressed for a very long time. Do you think that perhaps the type of amnesty that was given to the Niger Delta militants is completely different from what was offered? to Boko Haram terrorists? I think we must continue to give credit to President uh, Yaradua because he thought it through and he saw it through. You recall that he actually created a ministry that is the uh, Ministry of Ninja Delta or something yes. to look at that and he catered to their needs. So many of them were sent to school abroad. Many of them were given, you know, a lot of things were given. So that type of, uh, you know, it's much more idealistic and reasonable to give such people because of their natural resources, because you have denied them a lot of things. You give them such arm, not people carrying arm against the country without with a different ideology that they want to take over. Because what, if you look at what Boko Haram is, they want to take over and make Nigeria governable so that they can take over. In fact, they hoisted their own flag in some places. Up, up until now, there is even I mean, collecting... I mean, Niger State here. Right. Happened. Up until now, they are still collecting... Non-state actors like them are still collecting ransom from people or some amount from people before they can access their farmland. That is, is a treason well, on well, its own. Well, well, it has been in the news lately about uh, the, the taxation that... Uh, these bandits now, you know, especially the 2G group, taxes uh, villagers or residents of communities before they can before assess, they can assess, assess their farm. And, and these, these taxes run in millions. Millions. Of uh, even taxes that even the local authority, local government authority cannot collect from. That's what they are collecting. And that's why they said 2G must come to, you know, they must do no matter. It's still in Nigeria. And I trust Nigerian security. If they want to actually fish such personality, it is just a matter of a uh, matter of time. And, you know, if you see the governor, you know, there was a uh, exposure, uh, there was a kind of letter that showed that the governor was sponsoring them. I listened to the governor, he was saying it's, he can never do this such. So, and I, I doubt if a, a sane governor will now come and say they want to be paying 
millions of naira to such a non-state actor because he wants to govern the state. So I think as security men, they are trying, they, sh they need to do more. Well, Dr. Aliu, you made a statement that uh, you trust the Nigerian military. If they really want to get someone, they will get the person. I believe a lot of Nigerians will be wondering, why hasn't the Nigerian military gotten to G ever since he started his rampaging in the Northwest? If you recall President uh, Jonathan, he said in my, in my administration, there are some Boko Haram, there are some elements that are giving information. And that's exactly what is happening. You see, all this uh, Sububu, they also have in-house that is giving them information until we cut those uh, people giving them, you disconnect them from them. That's how you can actually apprehend uh, Truji. And you could see Sububu has lost his life. So I think such capital, uh, you know, the uh, punishment should be heavily uh, uh, I mean, put on them so that they will know that going forward, they will not have opportunity to exist. And that's why we must also be careful and fish out those people in government that will be giving such elements information about what is going and what is going to happen because imagine if the as uh, military and what have you are planning to go and attack them and they have somebody within give them for that this is where they are they are coming from you no know, it becomes uh you know what less of uh, in terms of planning of the military now, now this was the case uh, many years ago in northeastern nigeria especially in Borno, where you know military men would want to go on an operation and some sort of intel would be sent out to the terrorists and they would ambush, ambush. Them. A lot of ambushes A happened. lot of ambush. Lots A of lo lives, thousands of lives were, we're lost. Were lost. How, how do we cut off this uh, communication between these informats, informants who are moles in the system and the terrorists themselves? It, it, even beyond uh, looking at North East, even the Delta. What's the name of that? Oh, is it Okoma or what have you? Where the military want to go and they were ambushed, you know? So ambushing is, is that's why in military they have to be secrecy of such operational information. If it's not, if it's not secrecy, you know, people will take advantage of it. So the, uh, that's why we said those people that give out that information, they need to be traced down so that they can really cut them and see that no one embarked on such a because some de to, to some of them is profitable when you give an information you are giving five million you know it's 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 so so and that's why we must find a way to make sure that those people that are giving those information out and i, I can tell you nigeria government have a lot of gadgets have a rights rights to communications gadgets even up to the ncc that you can actually invest who communicates who and that's why when they are going for any operation sometime i recall in the northeast they will bring down all the communication system. so that system so that nobody can communicate within that environment until they achieve their what their mm -hmm. and that would have solved a problem imagine uh, this uh trilogy and what have you you want to cut him you've got to know where it is located and there is no communication for two three days before and you you, 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 invade. you invade because they wouldn't have access to what is going on but Trust those people, they still have what is called to I have a way of still communicating. Well, well, let me get your reaction to uh, what the National Security Advisor, Malib Noor Rivado, recently said about uh, arms control law being operational in Nigeria. Uh, I believe many people would certainly be wondering if, if arms control law is operational, how are these bandits or terrorists getting access to arms and ammunition that are almost at par with that of the military i think we have law that uh, deal with uh, light weapon and what have you operational energy i think it's it is working but if you look at this uh, military people i mean uh, the bandits and the terrorists the way they pass through their own arm you know through uh, sahara you know desert and you recall that with the issue we have in libya and what have you those are the routes they are taking it to but we we'll still challenge the government that you still have way of see stopping those things so they should do more but that is said is operational i think it's still operational because you know you can't compare in general to american society Certainly. where everybody have uh, you know we could see that in secondary school like this someone will just go with gun and deal with people you know even at a super store we have not degenerated to that level however those military are people uh, you during the last uh, um, cg of custom they apprehend a lot of uh, you know arms arms and ammunition coming yeah. in even this government also that are coming to the and up to now they've, they've not been that's what my challenge with nigeria now you said you are doing your findings your research on who actually imported those arms up to now we did not get to hear anything about it i think we need to do more to make sure we are so strict 
for people bringing arm and light weapons to Nigeria. Now, now a lot of people might as be wondering if uh, these arms law is in operation in is in operation, right? Uh, is it possible for people at this point to sort of own light arms to protect themselves at a time when it appears that maybe the government just maybe will not be able to protect them uh, what about two governors uh, specifically governor rada of katsina have actually uh, pushed that forward that he will want all the citizens of the state to have their own weapons so if those people are coming they can actually attack but the problem is that it will degenerate beyond what we are looking just as someone who has a weapon at home and then someone knocked the door what you think is to go and carry the weapon to so it may degenerate so it won't be a good advice for every nigerians to actually be free to have a weapon but we should control it and make sure that this bad element does not have access to those uh, those weapons now, now just like just like the gun laws that uh, have been a very hot topic of debate in the united states of america i believe somehow that the gun law debate should also be started way more aggressively in nigeria we have a, a, a deeper security situation than most african countries or than most countries in the world except for war-torn countries if people can actually have the money to purchase guns and have the money to pay for a license why not allow them own guns well for me i i wouldn't think in that direction i think what we need to do is to allow our vigilantes to actually have access to good weapon that would have even formed much more layer of uh, a secret but for individual you know people can have issue with their wife <laughs> and bring out the gun you know depends on the psyche and how we can of actually manage people. so we, we are not able to we don't have that patience to actually manage when you have such thing at home so i will only converse for our vigilantes you know most of them do not have access to weapon if they can have weapon but interestingly um i think the state police uh, bill is about to the way i'm seeing it is about to come on board if that come on board maybe that would have solved this uh, security problem because yes. with, with state or community police rather it will be difficult for visitors or you know people with negative mind to come into this to the yes. community because you would have known virtually everybody in that because i recall you know in lagos mostly we have used to have gates mm -hmm. so when you are coming there will be some or do our boys then will be at the gate so when you are coming they'll say who are you we've not seen you before which house are you going and all those things is that is ex a good example so, of so how some, some sort of police. security check exactly by the citizens or residents exactly residents these, uh, residents areas themselves where are you going who do you want to go and see? Have you been here before? You know, they can profile you and have an idea of what you are going to do. Perhaps if you have negative mind or you have been, you know, they will have noticed that this person does not. Okay, call the person you want to go and see. I think that will reduce this level of insecurity. Well, going forward, how do you think that the uh, military, Nigerian military, comprising of the army, the air force, and the navy, as well as the Nigeria police, can restore? peace and order in the country one and then the trust that people used to have for uh, security forces in the country all right if you look at security it's get it's evolving so and we must begin to follow it as it is now i think we need to um the nigerian police need to earn more one number two the style of them collecting money at every uh, uh bus stop you know it's 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 a serious issue too because it's it, has been, it has been an age-long issue and i must tell you it's it has gone beyond nigerian police i know yes i'm sure you know what i'm trying to yes. say because if you travel you see all those other people also collecting even though they want to be very strategic about it so i think that needs to stop so that we can really have confidence in these people very well so if they need to be if their salary need to be you know up, I think it's it's better. So, but but in other way around, they need to also defeat this banditry. By the time they are able to defeat banditry, you know, kidnapping and to reduce to the barest minimum level, we will have trust in them because uh, we are, want to agree that they are also suffering. Because if you look at the number of military we have been losing, number of Nigerian police we have been losing these uh, uh, challenges, it's not small at all. And their father and wife and husband of somebody. So it's, it's it, they are also uh, being affected. So we want it to stop, and they need to solve this problem for us so that we can have continue to have confidence in their actions. Oh, all right, Doctor. Now moving on, uh, as insecurity continues to bite harder on Nigerians, hardship is also another issue that many people are grappling with. 
especially people in rural communities in the country. Now, as reports coming in this morning have said that the FAC allocation for August to government tiers have dropped by 11.4%, over 150 billion naira. This story was captured prominently on the front pages of the Nigerian News Direct as well as the New Telegraph newspaper. Now, as it grates your screen, I'll just briefly, briefly uh, read out the headline story and we'll be back to the discussion. On the Nigerian News Direct, it says, Hardship, FAC allocations to government TS drops 11%. Strapline say as all tiers share 1.203 trillion naira and oil revenue slump, FX fluctuation is responsible. How would you react to this? Well, if you look at uh, our FX fluctuation, it is bigger issues. Uh, for me, even the gain of a first office removal have been eroded by uh, FX. So how do I mean? Now, if you share 600 billion naira, every month and the value of dollar is at 500 but now you share 1.2 trillion and the value of dollar is 1500 you can see that there is no any you know as an economist for yeah. me the value is not there in fact it has even reduced even though the money has gone higher the money has gone higher but, the, 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 but the value has dropped and if going back to those states too what they will use the money to do what they would have used already uh, 1 billion to solve will be asking for 2.5 Billion. Mm -hmm. So it may not actually show. And that's why we said it's a contradiction to uh, to have removed for a subsidy and also float the Nera. You know, you devalue, I mean, float the Nera, yes, you devalue the Nera and you also remove. You should have taken care of one. Yes. When you when you remove for a subsidy, the dollar is still under your control. Because globally, you can't see a country who left its currency to demand and and supply, supply. Yes. it's a difficult thing and very very in fact it's too elementary for the general to even go through that route because you need to have a control on all those so let me give you a, a, a good example dangote if you have sold fx to dangote and dangote is now producing dangote would have reduced the cost of what production, production through yes. that and would now sell at a rate of very very low so we have to look at those basic economies to apply to really benefit from this. So for me, that the that it's actually dropped if it's because of a lot of reasons. You, you could also see that our, our crude oil has also dropped from eighty to seventy seven. Yes. Now my major problem is that how much is the cost of producing a barrel of crude oil? How much? It's about forty eight uh dollar. And it is being sold at seventy-seven dollars. Remember, other sundry costs will still come. So, what comes to the federal government may not even be up to twenty dollars. And ideally, if you go to other country, the cost of producing a barrel would be like ten dollars or even five. Some even Libya is five. I think Saudi is fifteen. Some are five, ten. You know that would have give you a lot of more money. So, even federal government uh, income would have increased. Uh, the more, but I think this drop we could say is still not much, it's just marginal, maybe 1.150 billion compared to what they are sure. I think it's still, I'm sure it will still go up yes. maybe next month. So it depends on its FX uh, fluctuations. Uh, fluctuations. Well, well, well uh, General Abdul Salami of Abubakar has uh, spoken to the president of the country and has asked him to listen to Nigerians due to the fact that the hardship in the country is getting out of control. Now, earlier we spoke about General um, Theophilus Tanjuma, who you know, spoke to the CDS to end insecurity, which has been an age-long issue in the country. And now we see another former leader uh, who is urging the president to ensure that hardship ends in Nigeria. Also kicking against palliatives, which has been the bane of uh, Nigerians' suffering in, in the country. What? If you ask me, I think it's good that it's coming from leader like Abdul Salam, General Abdul Salam, because if you ask me, it's as if this government is not listening to Nigerians. Because by the time you complain about this, the one that's coming will be worse than that. Because you know we are talking about six hundred and something for fuel. Yes. Now we've seen uh, eight hundred and ninety-five for Abuja and NPC, and others are like, okay, even it's nine nine thirty nine eight. And now we are month. projecting almost nine, almost a thousand naira. Exactly. So the hardship keep knocking the more. And I, I, I want to blame federal government because they've not done what they are supposed to do. Ideally, when you say you want to remove waste subsidies, about three things is expected for you to do. Number one is to make sure our refinery is working. Up till now, our refinery is not working. 
National Assembly promised us, but the BMLA promised, prom President promised us, everybody have been promising, and we've not seen and our yes, nothing has been done. done working. And that's the problem, and that's why Dangote now comes because for a big private business person who wants to make profit, need competition for you to checkmate that person. So Dangote has come and is the only uh, producer in Nigeria now until we have a competition. That's one. Number two is the issue of CNG. As at yesterday, I went to convert my own car and I was told I'll pay 730000 And I said, okay, no problem. They say, and I filled the form right from last week up to now I've not received the message. When I got to the person, I went to the factory. I mean, where they are actually doing it. The guy said they only approved seven. And it's the only one doing that seven since about two weeks now. Seven vehicles. Seven vehicles. One person converting seven vehicles. And it has not finished since two two weeks. And we have got uh, so uh, it's please, quite slow. Uh, Dr. Aliu, for clarification's sake. Right. Seven vehicles per person in terms of conversion to convert. To convert. And it's the only technician that can convert it in that and, uh, and, point. And when you say seven vehicles, yes. is it for the entire states or what are we looking at well you know they have like five places that they are doing the conversion yes. so the one i went to i went to the one first they said they don't have kids so the one i went to said you know i have to go to they have two places where you get the form is different from where the factory is yes, yes. so i got the form and i now moved to the factory myself the week which is this uh, yesterday when i got there i met the guy the guy converting and i said when is it going to be our turn he said he cannot sell because he has been working on seven yeah. since two weeks, right? The, and I said, okay, is there a way I can? He said, there is no way that I have to wait until they send me a message and it is 730000 So look at the cost of converting. So that, that's more than half a million naira. 730000 to convert a vehicle, right? And the time you wait for, perhaps, another fear is that people that haven't, have even converted, they said they also have to queue to even get CNG. Do you see the control? So, so, so what, what, that, that what's, simply what's means that government is not actually ready because I expect them to unbundle the more, allow people to import. Because I asked the guy, why don't other people say it's the material problem? So we should have engaged. Maybe we have we only import the material from India and Germany or so. Why don't you unbundle and let people access? So I think it's a serious problem, and that's part of the promise. So if we have had our car converted, right? If I'm expending fifty thousand naira every week. For fuel, and I can actually change it to CNG, and I've spent thirteen thousand. Do you see the the, the, the difference? difference? Yes. You know, I would have saved a lot of. So let alone a commercial uh, mm -hmm. driver. So it is serious issue that government need to address. Then the third one we are talking about is palliative. Palliative for me is intervention, which is temporary. So because if you give an household hundred thousand naira of five families, how when how many months would they use that? I'm, I'm not sure that they can even, it can take them for a month. So the only problem now is that even if you earn anything now, you spend about 70% of your income on food, then about 20% on transportation. So what is left for you for rent, for school fees, other logistics, it's a problem. So the job is at the brink. You have been pushed the limits, whereby your income does not have value. Your purchasing power has been eroded with the economic policy direction of President Bola Mechino. Well, well uh, other issues that, uh, you know, people feel like the hardship in Nigeria is really biting hard on is the issue of arbitrary arrest and detention of journalists and the likes that we've seen. Uh, a case study is the NLC president, Comrade Joe Ajero, who has been in and out of, um, you know, the force headquarters, in and out of DSS uh, detention and all of that. Uh, are we perhaps seeing a situation where maybe... Uh, the president is rather governing the country with an iron fist. Well, it, it appears that uh, these uh, people leading us now who has benefited from protest, they've done it over time. If I recall the day uh, President, I mean, form, I mean, Abiola declared himself as president. I'm sure Bola uh, Tinubu will be around him and he has to like, you know, Please. flee out of the country and uh, Abiola was arrested and he later uh, uh, got, uh, died in that process. So, if you look at this, their experience, and if you also recall during Jonathan, this was also protested. So, but now that if a journalist talks now, you'll be arrested. If there is a protest, they will term that protest to be treason. And if you have a dissenting voice against what is going on, they see you as a bad person who is trying to commit 
treason. It's yes. quite uh, pathetic, and we shouldn't go in this direction because we're in democracy where people have right to actually air uh, their view. If anything stops people from the air their view, then the government is a tyranny uh, government. So we need to look into that. Well what, 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 what would you say about uh, these allegations by former APC stalwart Lukman uh, who said that the president is not interested if Nigerians are living or dying and saying that the president uh, has demolished and destroyed democratic structures in the country. Now this is a quote by Lukman claiming that the president isn't really doing what he's supposed to do. Well, if, if you want to check what we have so far, you see that uh, since President Bola Metinubu became president, Nigerians has never, has not find it better uh, compared to where we are coming. Let's even compare to Buhari uh, government. You know, the first day he became president, he said the first subsidy is what? is gone. And that's gone. the bane of our problem up to, up to now, I can tell you. And the issue of security, we, are, we cannot say we have really achieved anything. It's because there must be a sustainable way of... Uh, of doing it so if Regulus now said it's not if you also ask me i would say president bola metinubu during this system he has purchased for himself a new presidential uh jet yes, yes. a new car you know he's trying to better anything around him but nigeria are uh, worse off so and any policy that make more people to worse off are uh, compared to people that are better off is not a good policy so that's where you need to look at it very well and i don't know how soon that will be because this is one year three or four months to his uh, government i don't know and i'm sure in next one year it will be the uh, campaign for new uh, administration that will be on board so i think president bola Tinubu need to review rejig his way of uh, handling nigeria now oh, dr Aliu, we have uh, established the basis uh, for the internal situation or crisis that we're facing in the country insecurity uh, uh, hunger and of course the hardship that many Nigerians are faced with in Nigeria. However, the Apex Bank of the country, the Central Bank of Nigeria, has exposed what many might describe as grave danger for the country, as it says that the external reserves are endangered by false subsidy removal. You mentioned that the president declared that false subsidy has been removed on the first day he was sworn in. In fact, while standing there on the podium, he made that declaration, and since then, Nigeria has been in a state of uh, anarchy, especially for middle and low income earners. What does this mean for Nigerians? Maybe people who might not really know what foreign reserve is or why foreign subsidy removal is affecting our, our, our foreign reserves. Well, I tried to lay my hand on that story to really get the concept of uh, how the uh, first subsidy removal is affecting the but but basically we need to have a strong foreign reserve because uh, foreign reserves start as a cushioning effect it has one number one benefit is that if you have a good foreign reserve you won't have pressure yes. on forex because it will have served like you know like a buffer whereby you know when you need anything like that to the forest you can actually go okay, there yes. use it. the number one thing number two thing is that it also served like a how do I call it? A, 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 a an absorber for you to if you want to borrow money uh, internationally, if you want to engage in international dealings, they will go back to your foreign reserve. What is the capacity of foreign reserve? Well, well, well the, the capacity of our foreign reserve now, as estimated by CBN, stands at about thirty six point eight billion US dollars. Right. Only they added only to it which is quite small very small e extremely small for to a the, sovereign country to, to like some, nigeria not even to our population and to our level of uh, a gdp and what yes. have is quite is very very small and it's not good for us at all at all but you know it has been eroded like i said with this issue of floating of Nera and devaluation because yes. once you float Nera, you won't have much more in that foreign uh, reserve because the money you are getting from uh first subsidy removal is supposed to go there but you cannot go there because you need more money to actually cater to more things because you have devalued the nera. So I think our forex is the major, and that's why some of us are happy that people like Dangote are around. In as much as Dangote have its advantage, and we shouldn't expect some things from Dangote. Dangote is a businessman. For me, the number one benefit of Dangote uh, company industry in Nigeria is it will help us to have a forex yes. balance of trade, a uh, balance of of payments. Yes. That's number one. It also creates employment and increase our GDP. 
but that it will make our fuel price reduce that is what people should look into because he's a businessman and he want to break even now now uh, last last week uh, on monday i beg your pardon we were talking about uh, something on the show and uh, something was mentioned concerning the dollarization of nigeria where it appears that everything seems to be hinged on dollars because we have floated our currency and it, the naira is on a Divide. steady decline Divide. day by day yes. how do we reverse this dollarization and ensure that our economy thrives on our currency and not a foreign currency right you recall that even dangote when we look when the federal government decide that dangote they will, they will be selling crude oil to dangote in naira and dangote will also supply them in uh, that's yeah, right. the strategy to actually reduce the dollarization of because everything now is under dollars because our naira does not have value if you are negotiating even for anything now they will say it is, should be and that's why when president uh, bola metin will travel to china you no know, we now have china nigeria uh cooperation yes. i was thinking there will be a solid agreement in terms of using yuan using ch uh, chinese uh, uh, currency because if if the highest trading partner of Nigeria now globally China. is China. Certainly. So if it is China, then why not find a way that you won't use dollar to go and buy from from China? So we must find a way to give our Naira much more value. value. And we must discourage people from paying some services in in dollar. We must continue to pay in Naira to have to make Naira have value. If not, we will continue to devalue the Naira the more. Now, now, moving ahead, um, I, I believe we shouldn't dwell much on this, but you made a point uh, that will perhaps lead us into our next discussion. The NNPC Limited and Nangote Refinery are yet again back to another brawl. Now, this time around, it's not over the uh, price of fuel, as we saw on Monday. or the, It's rather about the quantity of supply. And there have been divergent uh, reports about how many... Or how much crude has been supplied to Dangote Refinery uh, in the news. Let me just uh, have a recap of the story and I'll have you react to it in a moment. Let's pick up a copy of the Vanguard newspaper as we look at what the developing story is between Dangote Refinery and NNPC Limited. Well, on the front page of the Vanguard newspaper beneath the masthead, you'd find NNPCL slash Dangote Fresh dispute emerges over supply volume. Strapline say NNPC hints of undersupply from Angote. We have delivered 111 million liters, says Angote Refinery. Excess supply looms as NNPC imports 135 million liters. While all marketers cannot import and lift from Angote, a statement by NNPCL. And federal government should provide welfare packages, CPPE says. The, the, the story speaks for itself. The strap lines also speak for themselves. But let me get your reaction to this. Right. I think uh, the major problem we have, like, if you recall, Langote said they need to supply in a year. And uh, NNPC said they can only supply two. two. two and that two, they've not sup the one they supply have not been used by Dango because Dango actually imported from US yes. the crude oil. So it's going to start using NNPC, I mean NNPC oil by October. By October. Going to record. So now the issue of supply is this and that's why we economists we always converse for uh competition. Now I don't want uh, Dango to also say though no, don't uh, telling NNPC that they shouldn't import. You know why NNPC should allow Dangote also to supply and the issue is that why should NNPC be the buyer that's a major problem that's major confusion that simply means Dangote also want to maintain global price and NNPC are there to actually cushion the effect compared to before they will now be enjoying their own supply yes. so it's a different is a big issue in terms of support for me if Dangote have enough I think NNPC should be able to buy because that's another problem. If you allow them to be exposed to exports, you know, now he said he's exporting aviation fuel, also exporting uh, diesel because he said Nigerian are not patronizing his uh, diesel. I mean, we, we saw in the news, you know, it's a serious where, contradiction. Where, where, where local oil marketers decided to boycott yes. Angote to buy, you know, uh, uh, fuel or import petrol or petroleum products at a higher cost, claiming that Angote refineries' diesel is cheap which to this day bugs the minds of many nigerians. nigerians 
Well, the fact is that, you know, that's why we need to balance it. They both want to make profit. Dangote they want to make profit. The uh, marketers also want to. And that's why we need NNPC to come in. Uh, or Minister of Petroleum, which is the president. President should give direction. Or the Minister of State, because the president is too busy. I wonder why they always want to be minister. Because you need to talk about health, education, you know, aviation. I mean, it started of, in the last administration. Well, but it doesn't make it. Has it bring about any difference? It even led to Kachuku sack the last time. So it's a serious issue. So for me, I think NNPC should manage this Dangote very well. Perhaps NNPC, I saw one paper, they said they are not usurping NM, NMDPRA. Yes. NMDPRA is the one that is supposed to be in this discussion, not NNPCL. And that's where the problem is. Because if you have allowed NDPRA, they will look at upstream, downstream, and look at the global market and advise them to this the amount. Uh, I mean, the amount. NMDPRA is the regulator in this situation. This but it, it appears that NNPCL is overshadowing the, the, the activities power. and powers of NMDPRA. And that's why we are having this problem of negotiation. Yes. Because if you allow NDPRA, they have the statistics, they understand how they actually they will actually negotiate to the favor of Dangote to the betterment of what the marketers and to citizens uh, of, of Nigeria, but yes. you are not allowing it because there's a, there's a shrewd secrecy in that sector that we are not seeing. Perhaps NNPC want to remove total subsidy, perhaps Dangote want to sell at global uh, price. price yes. So we are not able to really see those, but I, I believe with time it will definitely. Show um, but for now, I think NPC should make sure that they supply enough to Nigeria and at a considerable price. Because I can tell you, the nine one nine eighty one. In fact, there is a template of pricing which is quite surprising for September. Yes. So I don't know how that a uh, federal government will allow such to happen. Why don't you cushion the effect up to September? Then we'll move on from there. So that means by the time your refinery is also working, you have to come up with another. Uh, templates. It's not a good one for Nigeria. All right, Dr. Alio Ivos, thank you so much for always finding the time to come around. It's been a very engaging and informative discussion with you. Thank you for having me. Thank you.